Oh man, it is an eye patch kind of day today. I mean, most days are an eye patch kind of day, but especially today. I was buffy. Hello everyone, I am here today to share with you guys a full face of products and brands that are not mainstream, they're indie, small brands, there are a lot of ways you can go with it. But these are all products from brands that I feel like a lot of people haven't talked about or haven't tried before, myself included. I wasn't even aware of a lot of these brands. And this whole video idea started with an article that I saw talking about indie brands that are now sold at Target. And that got me thinking there are probably a lot of brands that I'm not familiar with that are just kind of launching in stores and brands are really picking up on these smaller brands that are really popular on like Instagram, for example. And I kind of wanted to test them out. I wanted to explore some other brands that I'm not really familiar with and just see what the quality is like, what the brand is like, because I think it's great when you see a smaller brand kind of grow and get bigger and they have great products and then they become super successful. And I think of Beauty Bakery a lot when I think of that story because they started out really small and then they grew, they had de they developed great products. I think they're part owned or they were bought by Unilever and now they're at Ulta and I think that's an amazing success story. And while all of these brands are sold out of Target, I know there are a lot of small brands out there that aren't in stores. And so let me know in the comment section below some other indie brands, some other small brands, ones that aren't talked about a lot. Leave me a comment down below. I have like a big list of brands that I already have kind of done my own research on. I'm very excited. I've ordered a bunch, but if there are more, leave them down below because I need, I need to buy some more makeup. I mean, I don't need to, but I want to. So give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed. New videos here every Thursday and Sunday. And without further ado, let's get into this. So we're going to start with the eyes. I have an eyeshadow palette here from the brand Colored Rain. Um, they're super popular on Instagram. This is the very cute one. Love the packaging. Like, how cute is that? And it has a mirror too. Oh, love. It says here that the shadows can be used wet or dry, which I love because anytime they take these like beautiful metallics and you make them wet, they just like pop on the eyes and I love it. If you look on their website, they have so many more products. Like this is just a very small sort of selection of products that they have available at Target, but I think that's a great way to kind of test out the brand and see what you think. And then you can go to their website if you really like their products and order more because they, they have so many more. So I am excited. Let's do this. So I'm gonna start with the shade Kiss Berry right here. Good, nice, neutral brown. Good starting point. That's a lot more red than I thought. Like looking at the pan, I thought that was gonna be a lot more brown, but it's turning out a lot more red. Interesting. I'm gonna use a different brush because I don't know why, but I don't like this one. <laughs> Should have gone in a little bit less uh, heavy. <laughs> that's just me. I just, I got too excited. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Like, look how nice that is. I'm gonna take a smaller, like a crease brush. I'm gonna dip it into Loveberry right here, which is more of like a cool tone, almost like a purpley gray. And I'm gonna put that Oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. I'm just gonna put that into the outer corner here. I just kinda wanna see how the colors like blend together, how they play together. Like kids in a schoolyard, you know? And while I continue to experiment with this, I do wanna talk about um, my Insta story where I had asked you guys, how do you define indie brands? And it's interesting because no one has a clear answer. So some people were saying like, products that are not sold in store. Others were saying just products that a lot of people don't know about or aren't mainstream. Everyone seemed to have their own individual answer on what an indie brand is. And some of you like myself were just like, I don't know. So to me, I feel like an indie brand is, I'm just spraying this brush with some Fix Plus here. Um, I wanna dip it into Pinkleberry. This gorgeous shimmery awesomeness right here. But I feel like to me, an indie brand is one that isn't super mainstream. Like a L'Oreal or a Maybelline, something that's, you know, very commonly found in store, has a large range of products that are very easily accessible to a large range of people globally oftentimes. And to me, I don't think it really matters if they're available in store or online. That's really pretty because you can have like a couple of products available in store and that doesn't really make you mainstream. At least that's my personal opinion. What do you guys think? Like, if a brand is sold in store, even if they have a couple of products, does that make them not indie or a small brand anymore? I don't know. Leave me a comment. I want to know. These shadows are really, really pretty and this palette is super cohesive and just everything plays really well with each other. Um, I will need to do a little bit of like a, 
uh, powder foundation just on the top here because the shades here are very dark for my skin tone um, but that's an easy fix I'm just gonna do that for like right up here just to make them blend a little bit more seamlessly for myself um, but the quality of these are really pretty I love the color story that they went with here like this color is oh it's gorgeous I wonder what happens when I like pat the shade on. Oh, it's even better. I love it. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit, add a little bit more of that purple right into the crease here, and then we'll continue on. All right, let's move on to a mascara now. This is by Pacifica Natural Minerals Dream Big Lash Extending 7 in 1 mascara. 7 in 1? Seven? Oh, they listed out. Okay. We have instant length, lift and separate, volumizing conditioning, rich color, lash serum, two in one brush, amplify with natural plant fibers. And they have this really interesting wand where basically you can twist it. And so you add length when it's long and you add volume when it's short. So let's see what that's all about. Does it say which side to use first? Oh, it does. Okay. So it says to use the long side first. Right now it is for length and then you can see we twist it and it shortens up. That's so cool. Wee I would just play with my mascara all day long. Okay, I need to stop doing this. It has the rubberized bristles that are a little bit short and spiky. I'm gonna try and focus this one on like the length. Draw those <laughs> lashes to the ceiling and not on my lids. And let's build some volume. Oh, it does feel different. Oh, that's interesting. I think it's just able to like tailor the formula and just like deliver it directly to where it needs to go, depending on how spread apart the bristles are. Interesting, all right. So that's what it looks like with two coats right there. It's not my favorite, I gotta say, but I like a really dramatic lash. Um, and this one says dream big, and it's just not as big as I would like. That being said, I think the wand is a really interesting concept, and I love that, that idea of being able to dual the, the formula depending on what the bristles look like. I think that's really cool, but it just didn't deliver the length or the volume the way I kind of wanted it to. So now we're going to go on to false lashes because this look kind of demands it. I have two different pairs because I didn't really know which kind of a look I wanted to do. So one is by Violet Voss. Foam mink lashes. The, the, they look like this. So I have these ones and I also have ones by Makeup Geek. These are their mischievous full false lashes and I liked them because they are three quarter length lashes and you guys know I really like the ones that are a little bit shorter just naturally going to like fill into your lashes without you having to do anything. But these look really long and dramatic at the same time so I'm kind of excited about these ones. I'm gonna start with these because yeah. I like three quarter ones and I don't want to trim my lashes. So let's just stick them on without any glue and just see what we're working with here. Okay. Mm, I can see where they're going with it. You can kind of see here. They're just a little too thick on the inner part. Like I'm going to have to add more mascara to just really make these blend. Let's look and see what the other ones look like. The Violet Voss ones have a much thicker band. Like these are a lot more dramatic but they're also a little bit shorter, which I kind of like. Now I feel like these are too thick of a line. Now I'm gonna have to add liner in order to make them like sit properly. I just want no brainer lashes that just make it so easy. You just kind of stick them on and they look fabulous. Just, I just need to make my own. Okay, so that's what those ones look like. Not having blended them, not having stuck them down with any glue or anything like that. So obviously they're not sitting perfectly. They are very, dramatic. They still look really good. They're very fluffy and I like that they're a little bit shorter because they just blend a little bit easier for me. I don't like the ones that are like super long to the the brows. It's just like it's too much. But these ones just look very thick and luxurious and I don't know. It's something about these I really like. You know what? I think I'm going to start with the, the mischievous ones because I am kind of curious if I add a little bit more mascara, are these going to blend? Okay. All right. Lashes are on. What do we think? I feel like they're a little long for me personally, but they were easy to apply. They they don't need to be trimmed, which is also a great thing. And um, yeah, they they feel they feel nice. I am also excited about those Violet Voss ones though. Those are also really beautiful. 
definitely more of like a night out kind of a look for me. But I mean, also this. I mean, I have to go, I'm going to a doctor's appointment with Julia like this. I don't even care. I don't even care. So now let's move on to the face product. I'm really excited about testing out this foundation um, because I believe Tati has talked about this brand very briefly before. Um, this is Haley's and this is their Reset Liquid Matte Foundation. This is supposed to be an oil-free, modern matte, kind of buildable, full coverage foundation that's supposed to be smudge proof. I got two different shades because I couldn't tell on the website which shade I was because they put, they put all the swatches on three different skin tones and then didn't label them which is kind of important so I got something that's a little bit more of a red undertone something with more of a yellow undertone I'll probably need to mix these together though that is a really interesting applicator right it's very thin very interesting I don't know like that feels a little warm maybe I shouldn't mix it versus that one like that feels like a better fit I don't know so I have my little sponge here and we're just going to Sponge it onto the skin. Oh man, this is oxidizing a lot. Okay, I need to mix in a little bit of that warm foundation. It's applying fairly smoothly. It is a very matte finish. So I'm, I'm curious to see how it's gonna look when it dries down. Um, Cause I have mixed experiences with matte foundations for myself. Sometimes they dry down really, really beautifully and they just give this poreless like effect to the skin. And then sometimes it's just very over drying. Now moving on to concealer, this is also by Haley's and this time the swatches on this part are labeled, which is great. Made it really easy and I picked out a concealer that I felt like would be a good match for me. This is supposed to be a creamy, lightweight concealer that's gonna give natural, buildable coverage to the skin. It also has light diffusing technology in it, apparently, that is going to like soften the look of fine lines and just make the skin look very like soft and smooth. I got the shade Fair Light Neutral it has a nice flat applicator here, nice and soft. It may be a little light considering the foundation shade that I chose, but we'll just work with it. And it says again for this one to blend it in with a sponge. So let's do that. Maybe I can like lighten up my foundation a bit with this. Ooh, I like that. I like that concealer. Wow, it's very full coverage, very smooth, and it like, it, it just blends seamlessly underneath the the eyes. As with all of my full face tutorials, we will do a check-in at the end of the day and just see how everything is wearing. I really hope that it looks like this because th this concealer is looking really good. Oh, I love that. Okay, cool. To set everything, we're gonna be using a product from a brand I actually hadn't heard about before this video, so I'm really excited. This is by the brand Well People and it's their Bio Brightener Baked Powder. It says here it's going to give matte radiance, again with the, with the marketing terms, matte and radiance, two separate things. It's going to blur imperfections, minimize pores, soft, luminous, healthy glow. Oh, I love that. So it looks like this. That is very, very white. I don't think this is a very universal. This is very light. It is a brightening powder. So I will try it for like under the eyes. We'll see what it looks like on the rest of the skin but this is white. Like, is it just supposed to be used for under the eyes? No, it says like minimize pores all over glow. Okay, so first I'm gonna just make sure that there is no creasing going on, which there is not, by the way, and I've been talking for a little bit, no creasing. That's crazy. I mean, I'm still gonna go over the area because I'm insane, but no, no creasing. It's amazing. So I think for under the eyes, I'm gonna go in with a little velour puff. I like using these for a powder, in case you didn't know that. Just wanna see if this is going to really like be super white on my skin or if it's gonna be a nice natural brightening effect. So maybe not for using with a velour puff because that's super white. Okay, so I've kind of dusted it on like the high points. So like the nose, the chin, like underneath the eyes and like forehead kind of area um, and like very light. Uh, we're gonna work with it, but now I'm gonna go on to a cream bronzer Which is why I didn't set this area and at the top and it is also by well people. This is their bio bronzer cream and This was I'm pretty sure this was pretty expensive. Yeah, this was over 20 bucks for this This little thing like how much product is actually in here? I paid $20 for this, but this is apparently a universal color that adapts to any skin tone to warm up the complexion. 
I don't think you can say that with a bronzer. There are just too many skin tones and undertones. It's just, you, you can't make this universal. So let's put a little bit of this on. It is very creamy. I feel like a little bit's gonna go a long way with this. I probably applied way too much to my forehead. Does it specify suggested age, adult use only? Yeah, it doesn't say anywhere if I should use a sponge or a brush to kind of blend it in. So I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna use my sponge because I have to wash this anyway. You could use a brush probably, but I just like took all of that off. I don't know if like sun-kissed warmth, that looks pretty gray on my skin. Like maybe for contour, I'm trying to like layer it up a bit and that seems to be doing well. Like it is blending in really, really nicely. Like look how nice that is. It's just, you don't get a lot of product. Like that's so little. Let's try it with a brush too, like right in the, the temples. Just see if that's any different. See, I don't like that as much cause it looks a little bit like streakier to me. I don't really like this product. It's <sighs> doesn't layer super well. It's not showing up really nicely on my skin. It does give a nice like under the cheekbone kind of a contour look but not for like overall bronzer. Now that I've evened myself out a little bit with a little bit of neck bronze, let's go on to blush. This is by the brand Profusion Cosmetics and they have a blush palette. I don't know why that word was a struggle for me, but it was. There are six different shades here. It appears that some of them are matte, some are shimmer, and then one is like glittery, like just very pronounced pieces of glitter in it. But this was super cheap. This was under five bucks, which is incredible. Um, and it says that there's just buildable, multiple tones you can wear alone or kind of mix them all together for like a nice radiant effect. Let, let's play. So how glittery is this? Kind of reminds me a little bit of like NARS Orgasm blush. You know, like how it's like, like glow, like pinky golden glow. All right, let's like layer some of these on. I'm gonna start with the matte shade Delight here and I'm going to focus that on the center of my face. I tend to like to use lighter shades of um, blush on the center of my cheeks and then go darker towards the outside. I just feel like it's the most natural looking and just blends the best and doesn't look clownish on me. And I always blend from like the top towards the center of my face. Again, that way I'm building up most of the color at the center of my cheeks and pushing it forward versus the other way around. It feels a little odd at first because I'm like, brushing the blush in the opposite direction than I would normally, but I like it. Now that we have the front of the cheeks done, let's go on to the back. So far so good. They are very pigmented blushes. Like you can see, like I've tapped my blush brush into this and it's picking up a lot. Like I am tapping off the excess on my hand. I don't want too much on. Also, I should note that in the process of like blending this, I'm picking up a lot of foundation. Like my blush brush is turning sort of like a foundation tone. So I wonder if I should use like, before I get too heavily into this, if I should use another setting powder because I, I want these products to work obviously. And I do have another powder that I, because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. This one's by The Cream Shop and this is Moon Dust. It's just a translucent lightweight powder that's gonna eliminate shine and hold up for 12 hours. It has a nice indented little scoop here so all the powder can kind of rest in here and it just makes it easier when you're picking it up with a brush. So I like the packaging design of this. So I'm just gonna dust a little bit of powder, a little bit more powder I should say, all over and just see if this helps set everything. I'm feeling very heavily made up right now. What was, what just happened to my skin? Did a piece of concealer just like off my face. That's so weird. Okay, it seems to have blended out, okay. But like a literal chunk like flaked off my skin. Oh, this does not bode well for that concealer. Oh no. Okay, back to blush. It's very pretty. It's very pigmented though. So you need to use a really light hand, but like under five bucks, that's amazing. Now let's go into a highlight. And this is also by the brand Pacifica. It is their Rainbow Crystals Liquid Mineral Strobe Multi-Use Concealer. Not concealer, 
while I say conceal it. And I got the shade Crystal Moon because when I bought this online, I could not find any swatches anywhere of the, they came with like four different shades. And so I was really worried when I was looking at the other colors that they would be too dark for me and then I can't really use it as a highlight. So I ended up getting the lightest shade, which turns out to be silver. And they do have a bunch of swatches on the Target website now, so just, it wasn't there at the time. So we're gonna try and make this work. It is a very, very icy though. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it with a sponge. Like, look at that. Oh, that'd actually be really pretty on the eyes too. Like not for this look, but like that would be really pretty. I'm putting it onto like the very, very edge right there. I'm trying to see where I want to put it. Maybe right here. I don't want to go too hardcore with this because this is very glittery. Definitely more on the icy side. Um, it is very glittery. If you want something for like a festival season, I think this would be good. I wouldn't personally use this as like an everyday highlight, but I kind of wanted to get a sense of what the formula was like and you know, how it applied to the skin and it looked really pretty online. So, you know, but like, yeah, it's way, way too like chunky glittery for me. And now on to lip products. And honestly, when I was looking through um, just different brands that I hadn't heard of, there was nothing that just spoke to me that I just really, really wanted to try. Though I do have one that I feel like I wouldn't necessarily call it indie or main, non-mainstream or even mainstream, um, but Honest Beauty has a lip product. Now I did a whole video testing out celebrities makeup brands and Jessica Alba owns Honest Beauty, so I did test out a bunch of products in that video, but I didn't get around to testing out her lip products and I feel like Honest Beauty as like a makeup brand isn't talked about a lot, so I figured this would be a good opportunity to test it out because I had it anyway. This is their lip crayon. It is demi matte. It is high pigment color. Um, this is the shade Fig. So let's apply it. Ooh, it's very soft. The scent of it. Ooh, it's like um a little bit minty, but like sweet. Definitely very pigmented. I'm like really lightly, lightly touching my lips right now. And I feel like this would look really beautiful as almost like a stain. So I might even apply this and then blot my lips and I think this would look gorgeous be just because of the, the demi matte finish. Like it feels like a very nice light lip balm on the lips. Like it's very nice. It, it barely feels like I have anything there. Just to like dab it a little. I just wanna give it a little blurred effect. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, 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 like that. So this is what we're working with right now. Obviously I will check in with you guys at the end of the day. We'll see how everything is wearing. Um, but this was really fun. Like there are some products that I didn't really like from a first impression standpoint and some that I'm really excited about. But a huge part of makeup for me is longevity. Like can it stand up throughout the day? Because that's gonna make it a product that I actually wanna wear on a regular basis. So I will check in with you guys tonight. We'll see what we're working with. All right, we are back. It is the end of the day. This is what my makeup is looking like. So let's talk about this. So first of all, eye makeup looked really good. It held up really well during the day. The lashes stayed on. Like it was like super windy out today. I was a little concerned about them, but they held up really well. They look good. They're super dramatic and we're a little bit out of place in the doctor's office, but you know. Still good. The lip product also held up quite well during the day. It wore off very naturally. It was still quite pigmented, even through eating and drinking and stuff. It did wear off, but it wasn't like balling up or clumping or like smearing off my lips or anything like that. So that was really good. The face makeup, I struggled with a little bit. You can see it's like starting to wear off and kind of streak marks here and over on this side as well. And I set it down with a setting spray as well, just because that's what I would do normally for most of my makeup anyway. It also felt a little bit heavier than what I would normally reach for for a foundation. So you can see it's sitting a little bit heavy on my skin. You can really see my pores and I put on a pore minimizer um, before I put on the foundation, I forgot to mention that. The concealer I liked, like it's it's sitting very heavy right now and so I wanna try using a little less next time um, and just seeing what that looks like and setting it with a powder that I love because I didn't really love the powder that I used today. I just really liked how it applied at the beginning of the day and so I just, I'm gonna give that another go. I'll let you guys know down here what that was like. But this was a really fun experiment. I got to try out a whole bunch of brands that I've never tried before. I'm excited to continue to play around with these products. Let me know if there are any other products or brands that I should try out for like doing another one of these videos and maybe test out your favorite 
indie slash small brands, let me know in the comments. Make sure you check out these videos on the side in case you have missed any and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Thursday and Sunday. And that's everything. I hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome weekend and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.